New AI developments are on the horizon. Are we scared? Are we excited? How does Scarlett Johansson feel about all this? We'll talk about it. Then our main case for today, how do you decorate your walls? Do you decorate them with bands and posters of said bands? Well, if you're this husband and wife duo, maybe that's causing some strife in your marriage. Stay tuned for our verdicts. What you are listening to is real. The parties involved are not cool. They are actual geeks with a case pending in the court of public opinion. The party's case has been dismissed, and the dispute will be settled here on our podcast. There will be no lawyers. There will be no witness testimony. The judge's decisions are final. Hello, I'm Judge Ivan. I'm Judge Jonathan, and this is Geeks on Trial. Today's case, Banned Posters. Welcome to Geeks on Trial. This is the podcast where we settle petty disputes between actual geeks over movies, video games, board games, and more. If you'd like to submit your own geeky case for a future episode, you can email us at geeksontrial at gmail.com. You can also support the show over at patreon.com slash geeksontrial for just five bucks a month, where you gain early access to our audio and video episodes, plus our bonus show, Geeks on Trial Sidebar. On our most recent sidebar episode, we talk about where in the world we would live if we had the choice to move anywhere we wanted. And we all know we don't have the choice to move anywhere we want to. We are locked down here until you guys join our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash geeks on trial. Give us five bucks a month so that we can move somewhere. (laughs) Yeah, that's all we need. We have to get at least 4,000 Patreon subscribers. Africa. For us to move. That's it. No, that's, ta- that's what I said to your mom last night. But I'm back. What does ta mean? <laughs> ta ta. See you later. Bye bye. Ta ho. Okay. So just one, you just do one ta. I have, I'm a busy man. I was running out. <laughs> I was trying, to, I was trying to skip out on the bill. Ta ho. Ta. Because she's a prostitute? Or you're, yeah. you're, okay. Not your real mother. Well, I don't know what your actual mother is. Like a, a dine and dash with a, with a prostitute? Listen, <laughs> I'm not going to say I was eating anything. A pimp is going to get you for that. Oh. What's this, what's the pimp's that's, name? That's you know, just what I hear. You have you have quite the pimp voice this week. You have you have a good raspy pimp Come on. Voice. No it's one good... it sounds it sounds the same. No one can it doesn't it sounds the same. You, you don't have to You have a good pimp voice. No, it sounds the if you don't call attention to it, no one will notice. It sounds like my voice. Oh. So your normal voice is a good maybe you have a good normal pimp can voice. Can you can we please get to the show and because we're wasting so much <laughs> okay. time. Okay. You know, you know, we have a story about something. What's what's our topic of this week? Pimp? Oh. Well, it's been a while since we talked about AI. It's been a while. For, which stands for artificial intelligence. Mm-hmm. And the people people have been clamoring for us to jump back into the fray when it comes to AI. I don't have a good fray song. I'm sorry. And OpenAI, the big company behind ChatGPT, has come out with a special new announcement. They had a little show where they talked about their upcoming advancements, including ChatGPT 4.0, oh. which is the new version of ChatGPT. It's more advanced. It can understand other languages. I don't know what it does. They had a whole video presentation, uh, including one part that took the world by storm, mm. where a guy has got a voice, an AI voice assistant on his phone, and he's talking to it, just like mm-hmm. you would a, a person, a human being. And he's asking questions like, hey, where am I? And it's looking around the room with the camera, and the AI is going, looks like you're in your office. All kinds of stuff. It, it can analyze the environment. It can see you. Oh, impressive advancements. Also, it's got a voice that many have pointed out sounds a lot like that Scarlett Johansson, particularly from... You might remember her performance as an AI robot voice in the film Her. Oh, I didn't. I didn't see the movie. I wasn't really talking to you. Uh, oh. And uh, there's been Shit. some weird kind of pushback on it uh, mm-hmm. where uh, OpenAI has said that they're putting this project on pause because uh, even though they used a different um, – it is it is actually a different act- – well, they claim, I suppose. They don't, didn't release her name. They say there's an actress who supplied the voice for this thing, hmm. the voice model, now that's, uh, that is not Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> that's interesting to me that they actually – I guess they have to get a an actress to record every – I guess every word in the dictionary basically to do some kind of thing, right? Or is this like a – 
I don't know how they do it now. I know, like, back in the day, that's how Siri was made. Was right. some I don't know if it was, like, every word, but they, they recorded a, a lot of words. But Enough now words might... for them to, like, you know, get a, get a, try, get a, a, um, a range of, like, different tones and different things that they can piece together stuff. Yeah, it's probably you have to. There's like a handful of phrases, and then right. a, the at this point, the AI is probably sophisticated enough it can just take from that. Now, I'm surprised a company like this had to go out and get a voice actress or actor. They could just like you know, if they wanted it to sound like Scarlett Johansson, couldn't don't they have enough stuff from Scarlett Johansson <laughs> to just piece things together and be like, we swear it's not Scarlett Johansson? Because I thought that was, that was the big thing about you know, about having AI that they didn't have to go out and get actors or actors. Like, are all the, the AI voices that are generated, is that a human, like a real human they've recorded? If so, is, isn't that part of like, you know, they need some kind of credit for that? Well, I think the real big thing for OpenAI is not wanting to get sued. Oh, and well, so yeah, that's, that would be. I mean, that's that's why they're not just taking the <laughs> the voice from a, from a real human being without their permission. But like, uh, okay, to be fair, like, isn't that what AI does? I mean, open AI, sure, as a company, but in general, like, don't they just like scrub the internet for everything and then piece stuff together? Like, that's why they're getting in trouble for like different art and artists theft and stuff. Well, I don't think the the art is a different thing. Mm. Uh, Mid journey and all that, I. Th- now I don't know what I'm talking about. It's going to become clear, but I I don't think that's maybe that's OpenAI. Or maybe they have one of those, but some of the art ones are different companies. Right. I mean, I know so there's like you know because there's like the Dolly. There's the there's like thousands of different companies that do it. I just I yeah you know wasn't sure if they all kind of are on the same thing. Like ones using they're all using the same platform. I'm not 100 percent sure about that because well, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a lot easier to look at a piece of AI art and say, "Oh, that part of it came from Van Gogh, or, or right. came from, and it could be a new, some web comic artist, whoever." Right. Whereas, like the written word is a little more like, "Oh, you might say, mm-hmm. oh, if they, they, if they, this wrote it in the style of uh, uh, Dostoevsky or something, or, right, yeah. sure. <laughs> whatever it is. Um, but but it's not as concrete as like an image, which is feels more like, oh, you literally lifted that and stole it. Right, because you can actually physically see, like, unless it's like, you know, text or voice that is a direct quote from somebody. Because, I mean, in theory, everything that we say is based on somebody's something. You know, like we, nothing we, we say is 100% original. Nothing we say is a hundred percent original. Um, and, and in this case, but it sounds like they haven't really said what's going on. But it sounds like they are pulling back on this because they are worried that the voice is too close to Scarlett Johansson, and that people have been like, "Hey, this is kind of weird," <laughs> and well, they're afraid of getting sued by her, maybe. <laughs> but and that's the thing, you know, it's fine if it sounds like Scarlett Johansson or Scarlett Johansson's character, but pay her. You know, like, yeah. If well, and ask her for permission, too. <laughs> well, that, too. But, like, you know, hire her as Don't just an, send her a check and say thanks. Hire her as an actress. Hire her as, but you know. But she probably as, doesn't want to do that. So. No. But at the same time, you know, people are saying, like, this is kind of new and stuff. This has been going on for years with AI voices copying other things. Because, like, back in the day, um, the, the in-car TomTom units or the GPS units had like, oh, you could do Morgan, have Morgan Freeman's voice or one of them was Mr. T. Now, I'm not 100% sure because it was years before I even cared <laughs> if they actually hired these people. Mr. Or T like, you know, recorded all of those. That was all real. Or if they just lifted them from movies and stuff, kind of like the old soundboards from back in the day from like E-Bombs World where they just lifted it from different movies. You know, it, it, it is an interesting thing because, yes, she is an actress. She should have to not try out, but she, you know, she, has, she should be brought in and be like, hey, do you want to do these record your voice for it? Sure. I mean, that would be, that would be ideal. Now. Uh, yeah. If it's somebody who is like an impersonation of her that they hired, because that's what they're saying. It is. Oh, we just found a voice actress to come in and she happens to sound like her. Now, the only way they could prove that is if they bring her to the court and, you know, they actually hear the voice. But, like, what if it is somebody who is, like, a mimic or somebody who is, like, you know, a great impersonation? Is that allowed? 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, it, it has to be allowed if it's just or if it's just someone's voice. Right. There's not you can't copyright the sound of a voice. That's right. Not I don't know really. because like unless you're like <laughs> like a Gilbert Gottfried or something where your voice is like <laughs> specifically that and like that is your character. But I don't know if you can copyright a voice because because voice actors copy voice actors all the time. Like sure. Bugs Bunny is still Bugs Bunny and and Mel Blanc has been dead for years. Well, and Bugs Bunny is uh, well, like, like Clark Gable. Right. <laughs> is, right. right. Like they're all uh yeah, or you know, the brain is Orson Welles. Right. right. They're it's, all it's... copied or based on uh somebody else in the past and somebody else is still doing like, you know, Mickey Mouse isn't uh oh my god. It's based on a mouse. Right, you know. Is Mickey Mouse based on a person? He's not the original No, I was saying he's not the original voice actor anymore. True. That is true. Does it, who, nobody voices Mickey Mouse. It reminds me of um, another in video games. There was a game, you know, you know, the game Heavy Rain. Yes, it was not Heavy Rain, but a different one by the same by the same guy uh, where he did motion cap. And it was um, what's their name from Juno? Ellen um, Page, who isn't Ellen Page anymore. And but I at the time it know. was it's Elliot Page now. But at the time it was Ellen Page. But uh, they sued, or I, th- or I think sued, or attempted to sue because they had a character who seemed like pretty clearly, or no, sh- no, no, no. That's sorry, I'm getting it mixed up. Ellen Page was in that game, <laughs> right? Maybe it was The Last of Us where there was like an issue because they thought that Ellie from The Last of Us—that's the character's name. Was oh. supposed to be modeled after. There was something going on with the with the actors and mocaps with <laughs> Ellen Page. That makes more time. sense because I'm pretty sure Ellen or Elliot Page was credited for that game. Because who's the other male in that? That was um in the last of in Last, last of, us. of Us. No, no, no. In um oh Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe, the... and I think that was the big thing because they were like, oh, these are two celebrities who are basically they are them in this video game. But it makes sense that the Last of Us because Ellie, not Elliot or Ellen, you know. So it sounds like they would uh, be copying it. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, it was. Sorry, it was the Last of Us that was. There was there was kind of okay. like a weird that makes more reaction sense. to it. Yes, it makes more sense than the one that you know they actually were <laughs> paid for and <laughs> auditioned for and chose to work for or whatever. Um, but anyway, so there is a weird gray area with all these things right. of yeah, what like and a face feels less gray than a voice. Uh, I, oh, I don't, I I'm so. sure, I'm sure they could get away with it if they really wanted to. It's more right. like, you know, open AI is a company all along, especially even with all the chat GPT stuff where it kept getting more restrictive and it right. kept responding to you with like, I can't do that. Cause, uh, what if someone gets offended when you write something right. about the president? Well, wasn't it open AI? They don't want to get any trouble at all. They just want to avoid it. You can't ask them or chat or whoever, like, oh, I want a picture of. Scarlett Johansson juggling in the rain. It would be like you need to ask for like a Scarlett Johansson lookalike. Yeah, like, oh, they you probably couldn't even you... say you couldn't say the name of a real person. Yeah, right. like they really they'll try really hard to. But like that's I mean yes they're kind of covering up, but I think it's at a point where we're trying to cover up a little bit too much because it's like so an an artist can like draw any actor comedian person and have them doing whatever. It just happens to be that <laughs> right. right now. AI is still in the, a little bit of a not so great light right now because people are afraid of it being copying and whatever. Now, I do think they should be paying whatever voice actor they're copying. Like if they're if they're lifting her voice, yeah, you're 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 in trouble. But if it's like somebody who is like if they can give us a name right now and show who it was and maybe I'm sure they have the video footage of them recording in a studio, then I think they're good. But I think it's a little shady that they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we have an actress, but we're not going to give you the name right away because now it's like their legal team is like, shit, we need to go out and find someone who sounds like her quickly. (laughs) It is a little weird. They did say something about like the respecting the privacy of the actor or they just don't reveal those things about internal stuff. I don't know. Isn't that just legal paperwork that they have? Like they they have a contract signed. Like you're not you're not like NASA or something. You're not like right. the CIA. What are you? Like we, I, I think protecting? we knew who the Siri lady was like right from the start. Like it's not. And also, it's, did you know, like, I didn't know this, that the lady who was like, works for Verizon wireless, the, the, like your inbox is full. Like that kind of person. That's a real person. Like that is a human. That sounds like a robot. Who oh, yeah. recorded that's, all those. That's my grandma Miriam. Oh, how's grandma Miriam doing? 
She's been dead for a long time. Wow, but she still lives on in our phones. Here's the the real question, though. The important question about all this is, is are you ready for the AI voice assistant revolution? Are you excited to have a her in your ear? Yeah. Okay, well, I do too. like, I, I because I'm a, I have the Google Home, I have the Alexas, I have all those things powering my entire house. I want, you have an Echo, you have a... <laughs> It's all of them. I want I want voices that sound real, because all the voices do sound computerish, and they sound you know different, and it's not you know unless you're going for like the Star Trek theme, which we might in our household, you know it's 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 I want a human voice. I want you something do. that's not like Microsoft Sam from back in the day. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. I don't know. Sure. What about? I mean, it seems like you don't. I don't really care. I guess. <laughs> I mean, it depends what I'm using it for. Like, you know, for asking, like, "Hey, what's the weather today?" or whatever. <laughs> I don't really care what it sounds like. That's basically I, all I use mine for. <laughs> well, I use mine for that, or like, you know, my calendar stuff. Like, tell me what I'm doing today. What stuff like that. But like, I mean, look, if you make the robot voice hot, then sure, oh, that's I, another thing. I that's didn't a different go there. Thing. That's a different. Yeah, thing. I'm that's... saying. Yeah, I mean, that's what we're all dancing uh... around though. Yeah, you're right. Like if it's doing if it's doing my grocery shopping, it can right. sound like it can sound like Stephen Hawking. Uh, if you're gonna make it sound like a like a lady, I'm well, pro- you... I'm gonna probably fuck that robot voice. What what is what, what is your what is your fuckable mm-hmm. voice that you want? What is what is the voice that you want? Oh, you, I'm thinking you, you, Grandma you... Miriam. Oh well, perfect. <laughs> we have hours of Grandma Miriam. When you just call Verizon and check your voicemail. She was pretty, pretty interesting back in her day. Those gams, a lot of men talked about her gams. Well, that's, oh, no, no, no. People were calling her gam. Hey, gam, gam, gam. How's it going? They well, weren't, they weren't talking about her. Well, unless, wait a minute. It worked both ways. Was her nickname gam because guys like to, you know. Oh, it stood for Grandma and Miriam. Anyway. Uh, huh. The AI revolution's upon us still. What but I do, do, but I do think, like I said, because this you is what the, think. this is what the, a lot of the, the, the strike was about. If it's actually, sure. if, if you're actually lifting her voice, pay her. But yeah, but I, mean, I don't think they, I think at worst they were probably, I, I, I certainly think it wasn't, it was intentional to make it sound like Scarlett Johansson. Now, whether, okay, but yeah. I don't think they, I don't think they lifted her voice literally. Right. Either it was a sound alike actor or. They just used AI and like tweaked it, but there's no doubt in my mind that because of the movie Her, that they were using that that connection was intentional. <laughs> or if it was like, or not even like fully intentional, like they, somebody liked the movie, somebody created AI yeah. in their brain. They're like, oh yeah, I'm looking for a voice that sounds like this, and, the, and they didn't realize it until they're like, somebody in the audience was like, hey, that sounds like Scarlett Johansson. That's just the thing now. That's what it should sound like. She should be flattered, right? Anyway. And uh, Let us know what you think, If folks. you're listening, Scarlett Johansson, call into the show. Or if an AI <laughs> impersonation of her is listening, we'd mm-hmm. like to hear from you as well. Or Colin Jost, either or. No, I really don't care to hear from him. <laughs> Let's get to the case for today. We have some. Uh, we have a dispute to settle, as we do every mm-hmm. week on our show here, nope. Geeks on Trial. Today's case comes to us from the internet. You can find a link in our episode description. Check it out for yourself. Our defendant today is Adam. Adam is married to his wife, Jessie, and they're very happy together, except for one little detail. You see, Jessie has covered the walls of their home with band posters, specifically for emo bands like your My Chemical Romance, your Taking Back Sunday, what have you. Adam says that every inch of the walls in their house, including the bedroom, is papered in these posters, and he's tired of feeling like he's being watched by these emo guys all the time. He's asked Jesse to take some of them down, but she has not been receptive to his requests. As dual judges here on Geeks on Trial, it's now our job to determine whether those posters should go down, down, and put into a box, or if Jesse should chime in with a hasn't my husband ever heard of decorating the goddamn walls. I like that. I like that a lot. That was good. So uh, I, I do find it weird that that uh, somebody in their 30s would be decorating their entire room with Elo Phillips posters. That's a little creepy. That's a little much. I'm not. I don't even know if there's that many or any Emo Phillips posters, but uh, that's a little. If I had weird. one Emo Phillips poster, I would get 
dozens of, of prints of it at Kinko's, and I'd, I'd have him all over the place. I'd oh. be putting him up on telephone poles. Oh, Jonathan. Have you seen this? Jokes for no one in the audience. <laughs> for us jokes for us that's that's the name of our show and uh yeah so are there any posters or any is there any musical people or any things that you would from floor to ceiling as a as a as a older millennial that you would post all over your bedroom it has to be bedroom not your actual is somewhere your bedroom well we've all done posters before right right we're all, we all, everybody goes through a time when they like a poster. Yeah. Specifically college, right? College is like the big, that's when you, you need to make yourself, you need to make your personality known. This is my personal space. I can't put nails in the walls. I can cover my walls with scotch tape and posters. That is what I can do to make my room mine. Um, I currently, so... I, 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 you know, you've seen it. Oh, you hit your microphone there. You've, <laughs> you've, you've been here. Oh, he kissed it, folks. Mm-hmm. Um, it was erotic. Mm-hmm. I have, they are posters, but I now put mm-hmm. them in frames. Now that's different. If you frame a poster, is it no longer a poster? It is no longer a poster because I think there's a thing between having a poster as there's a thing with age and uh, design that is a, there's a crossover limit. So, you know, once you graduate college and even like living on your own um, outside of a dorm room or your parents' bedroom, taping or thumbtacking a poster. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, you put posters up in your parents' bedroom? My parents' bedroom and my parents' house. The bedroom in my parents' house. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's why they kicked me out. They're like, stop hanging your emo Phillips <laughs> posters in our bedroom. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, I get so, it. So, in my opinion, having you know non-framed posters of anything in your house, um, just kind of that's taped up. I think it's a red flag for me. A red flag. It's a red flag. It's it's weird. It's childish, in my opinion. What's the What's the thing that makes it wrong? Is it? Uh, and you're saying past a certain age. I think it's an age it, thing. It, it's it's a very like it's a childish thing, in my opinion, because it, it's it's that. You're stuck in your dorm room or your high school bedroom or whatever. And like, you know, you, you have a little bit of money. You ha- you can go out and get a free. You could take the same poster that you had in your high school bedroom. Be whatever it is to an extent, to an extent and put a frame on it. And now it's different. Now it's art. <laughs> so it's an, it's really, it's an aesthetic thing. Yeah. For you. It's a, it's like a, it's a decorating. It's kind of a sign of maturity. Yeah. Because like, you know, you have more respect. It's more also like a respect for that. <laughs> oh boy, folks! If you could put Everything's a frame fine. around Don't worry about that, it. Um, Don't worry about you know, it. it's kind of also like a, a respect for art and kind of stuff like that too. It's like you know, you're framing it. It's more of a permanent fixture than something you're just going to rip down, and 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 stuff like that too. Because I don't know something about like du- not duct taping, but like taping something, and like it just shows like a sign of maturity. You're you're right. It's a thing. So, like that. so I, I I do kind of agree with you. I mean, obviously, that's what I have done for myself. Right. I I I have stuff that's framed. I don't have just a poster taped on the wall anywhere. I don't think. No, I, have, well, I don't. The, the only exception. Oh uh oh uh oh! Hypocrite alert! <laughs> a cal- it's a calendar. Oh, well. I frame my calendars. Say your word out. I have one. I have 12 different calendars. <laughs> Each month is framed on the wall. And I just look to the one I need for that. Your framing for that budget for the year is expensive. You throw those frames it's out. It's a lot. It's a lot. We can talk about that too in a minute. But um, yeah, so so like part inside, clearly I agree with you, but I don't, right. I don't know. I'm trying to think if I like went to someone's house and they just have posters on the wall. I probably would be like, oh, that's a little tacky, I right. guess is the word. I don't know that I'd say red flag. I don't know that I'd be like, oh, if I'm like dating somebody that I'm, this is a deal breaker or something like that. Well, um, I, you know, it's also a thing. Like if you're dating someone and you went to their house and they had posters up, it's kind of like a, is this not like, did they not grow out of this? Is it not a, you know, um, or is it like they're not, because when I think of a poster, I think of it's more of like, it's a throwaway thing. Oh, you're going to take that one, rip that one down and put up the, the next thing eventually. So they're not committed to stuff yet. That's that's the kind of thing that pops into my head. Yeah. Well, in this case also says that the walls are covered in them. So it's right. it's that is maybe even more of a of a, you know, what's a, one I could I feel like I could see if it's like an attic or can't can't you 
can't you picture a wall like an indie movie where where a guy's yeah. there's like a he's playing a guitar and there's a keyboard and a and a DJ set up and the wall is just like band concert posters that are like all next to each other. But but as you <laughs> say that, that I'm seems picturing okay. like a a college guy. Hmm. I, I'm picturing a middle aged indie rock mm. dad band guy. <laughs> oh, but that's different though. That's not your normal. I'm picturing living Nick space. Offerman in that one movie. That's sure, like uh, sure. that would be like maybe okay. the basement or like the garage, like somewhere where it's like, mm. oh, there's not really walls behind here. Let me cover up the shit with posters. Mm. Or, or like, you know, that kind of thing. But I also I, I get to the, uh, the mindset when you're saying that of like, you know, newspaper clippings and it's somebody who's going out to murder somebody. <laughs> well, that's the next. That's always the gateway to right. that. But, you know, um, you're right. There is yeah. a place for it. Like, you know, you walk into like, um, you know, like in New Jersey, we have the Stone Pony that kind of comes to mind or like a, a punk club, like some kind of like thing like that. And that's where I kind of like I'm getting the vibe from this, too, because like you haven't matured in decorating to an extent like yes i have video game posters up but they're in frames so sure it's like oh i take a childish thing and i put a frame around i put some wood around it and it's higher class but it's still you know <laughs> yeah what is that why is it, that's all it takes right <laughs> what is what why does it why is it elevated in such a way there's not really a difference no but it's in a frame so it's like <laughs> oh that's art now <laughs> oh boy I'm going to hack up along on today's show, folks. But as I long as you know, put it in a frame, that's art, so it's fine. I will. I want to know what posters did you have on your walls in college? Mm. So or, I, or as a teenager in your yeah. home, I suppose. Um, in college, it was because I went to film school, so of course I got film posters. I got posters for just different movies that I enjoyed. Um, I, do, I remember the one that was always above my head that my roommate was like creeped out by. It was, um, oh, it was a Vincent Price movie, House on Haunted Hill. There was a poster for that. It was kind of creepy. It was old school. It was whatever. Um, but those kind of movies, movies that I was enjoying at the time, I went to posters.com, not a sponsor, and just got, you know, whatever movie posters that I enjoyed. At home, I know I had um, I had a Weird Al poster. I had, uh, I think I had a, a free Mario 64 or one of the Mario game posters. You know, mainly video game and concert stuff. What about you? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of movie posters. I did. I did some stuff from eBay. At the mm -hmm. time, that was like a way to get posters. Yep. Um, also, a big one was going to Comic Con. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And and they would have booths. I'm sure they still do, <laughs> with uh, posters for different TV shows. I, I remember getting like Battlestar Galactica, mm -hmm. Evil Dead. I would have. Um, they would do them in. So it wasn't a frame, but they had them in like a sleeve. It was like a giant of. card thing. I know what you're, I know exactly what you're talking about. It was like one of those monster yeah. or Magic of the Gathering card sleeves, but right, big. right. So like slightly higher class, I suppose, than than nothing. Like a condom for a right. for a poster, right? Um, uh, yeah, mostly movies, video games. I don't think I ever, I, I I've never been a huge music head. Generally, I don't think I did any band posters personally. I think you and I probably had the same Weird Al, Weird Al poster. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, did I have any other? Because band you're right. Because I don't I, think so. I like a lot of music and I follow a lot of bands, but like I'm not. I was never like a band poster person. T-shirt, sure, a band T-shirt. That's fun. Um, but so later on, I in got life, a bunch of those. Um, I, I I got a job at AMC Theaters, and I was I worked in the movies for a while, maybe for like two years. I worked in the movie theater, and in my storage unit right now, I have a lot of those double sided theater movie posters. That, you know, once I get my own house, I'm going to go through and, and, and figure out which ones I like and frame those. But, um, yeah. Like, I have, these are like the full size ones, yeah, right? Like the big movie posters. Because I have a, I had a Clerks one. Yeah. I also think it was from eBay. But it, it's like, <laughs> I don't know what to do with it because it's yeah. so big. It takes up like half a wall. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I had a Ninja Turtles. Let's see. What did I have? <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to think like what because I know I had sort like I like um I did have a pulp I did have the pulp the pulp fiction poster. Right. Yeah. Everyone had. <laughs> so there are now there know. are certain key posters that if I walk into somebody's house who's like mid thirties, I'd be like, okay, it's time to get rid of that poster. <laughs> I do have some of my things that are now framed were on my walls yeah. in college unframed. Like I have a few uh, signed signed posters yeah, that yeah, yeah. um that I have framed now and they're in my my office in my bedroom. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's a, it can be fun. If you're, if you're a, a nerd, mm -hmm. it's a fun 
way to decorate your walls, but the frame, as you said, does give it a little class. Now, it also depends on the room and what the subject matter is, because I'm very, you know, when it comes time to decorate a, a standalone bedroom, you kind of have to take in mind, you know, what you're doing in that room and, and what you want looking at you when you wake up in the morning and, you know, like, 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 like having posters literally plastered to the wall of just these emo guys staring at the bed could be a little unnerving. <laughs> could be a little creepy. Mm-hmm. Well, here's the next question. What's your stance on emo music? I like it. I was, I was an emo. We were, we went to high school and middle school around that time. So I was a hot topic nerd. I had the black fingernails. I was that kind of that, that person, but I still listen to like, you know, I like fallout boy. I'll listen to fallout boy today. My chemical romance, um, panic at the disco. I'll enjoy those every now and then when they come on the Pandora. Would I now? What? Yeah, no, go ahead. Would I go to one of those concerts today? No, I didn't have a poster now. Um, But like, yeah, I wouldn't go to the one of their concerts, but like, you know, you wouldn't go to um, when we were young or whatever that is the, the, like the concert tour with all those bands. No, I would would feel sad because there's, there's a lot of people that'd be at those concerts that are still stuck in that lifestyle today. And, and you, yeah, and people <laughs> you know say the kind stuck. Of people. They say this is we're loving life. You're that's being true. a little judgmental, but that's I your job. And so I, I can't. have they, they mailed me the gavel. <laughs> I can't. Hold, they did. They did. Uh, see, I don't really know. I'm so I was not really in that world. Right. Uh, I, I couldn't even tell you. I had to Google what are emo bands to do the intro because <laughs> I, oh, I don't know. <laughs> You were oh, more like, like adult contemporary, that kind of style of Don't, music. That makes it sound like I was listening to Yanni or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I like indie, indie, which, alternative, yeah, alternative indie, which and and just general rock and stuff like that, which sometimes has crossover with emo. I do remember uh, specifically Panic at the Disco. Mm-hmm. It was whatever that album is. Uh, is it I Write Sins Not Tragedies or is that just the name of the song? That might be the I name. Know. I know that's the name of the song, but it could also be the. Uh, yeah, whatever yeah. that was. I remember f- f- listening to that for the first time when it became like a thing. Right. Or actually, like maybe before, really, like a little before it became a thing. Because, like, I didn't, at that time, we, I mean, emo, I don't, we, I think we, emo became a thing <laughs> while we were kids. Right. It, like, like, yeah, when, like. At least, you know, in a, it's been around in different forms, but. But, like, the My Chemical Romance fallout, but, like, that was, like, when we were, like, middle school, high school, our formative years for music. But I remember listening to that album and being, like, and, and really liking it and thinking, yeah. like, wow, this is. Very, it's not like anything else I've listened to. It's very theatrical, kind of like musical theater, specifically that, their style and that album. And then later, kind of, it got this association and reputation. And I, I, I had to be like, oh, am I like, is this a, I don't, I guess I can't be associated with that anymore. I don't you were actively be like one of those pushing weirdos. it away. You were shoving it away. <laughs> but that's also funny that you mentioned like the theatery thing because like I was a theater kid in school and like, you know, so that was like a lot of the thing was like the, the goth emo was associated with theater and stuff, which is weird. Yeah, but it became, it was just a funny thing of it being this such a pure experience. I'm yeah. like, I like this, not because no one, there was no stigma, there was no right. genre associated with it, at least that I was aware of at that time. Right. Um, but yeah, so it wasn't really anything that I got. Or it's And it's kind of, I guess emo, it's like sort of adjacent to pop punk as well. Like yeah, like Green Day is kind of like in that yeah. Venn diagram of stuff, but Green Day was much older at the time. But yeah, but that kind of, yeah. vibe of music now if you're going to somebody's house and you're getting into the bedroom and you walk into the bedroom <laughs> and not a few posters like fine there's a few posters on the wall you can kind of <laughs> but the way they're describing this in the case file it's like there's not an ounce of drywall uncovered in this room that's a little bit of a a little bit of an ick a little bit of it's a little much. a little bit of a... now at what point do you, he says, so they've been married for five years. Right. And presumably, probably they lived together before that, longer yeah. than that. They're heathens. Yeah. <laughs> they were living in sin. <laughs> so like, when do you, if you get together when you're 25, they said they're both around 30. Mm-hmm. If you get together when you're 25, that's probably seems more acceptable. Like, 
right. over the years, is there a time when, oh, when you're moving into a new place, when you start seeing them put stuff up and you start right. to go, eh, like, wh where do you draw the line? When do you say something? I think it's okay. Like, if you were to move into their apartment and you guys are cohabitating and it's, like, still their place from, like, maybe when they're in ho a co college, maybe that makes more sense. But, like, I'm assuming they, like, you know, purchase this. They're, they're both on the deed of this, uh, uh, this apartment or whatever. And it's, like, at what point do you go... Hey, maybe I have some say in what decoration goes up in here, because that's like a maybe yeah. like, a, like a weird thing. It's like okay, this is clearly her room that I just happen to have a, a side of the bed on, and it's like you know how much. But you could that you could say that about anything. Like when you when you let somebody take over the decorating of the rest of the house, you know, uh, you, you want to have your say, and especially when it's something so dramatic. It is funny because it feels like the the cliche of this the stereotype should be the other way around that it's yep. the man who has the dumb uh, like childish decor yeah or yeah. whether whatever it is <laughs> and the woman who's like oh my annoying husband always right. putting up the posters when i just want to have a live laugh love <laughs> <laughs> but it seems like you know if even if it was like one or two posters in the bedroom or whatever you can kind of get like you could be like, okay, I can I could put up something that's mine to counterbalance it, or you know, something a little different to that fact. But this is very much we haven't seen posters, I mean, we haven't seen pictures. There's not whatever. So it's like it seems like it's insane. Like it seems like <laughs> it's like over the top for a bedroom. It does sound a little oppressive. A yeah. little intimidating to constantly have and emo bands. It's all like one genre of band, which uh, Adam says he is. He's also a fan of these bands, so right. it's not. At least it's not like something he hates. <laughs> that, but it could, that could be, be worse. But take the the band or the emo out of it. Anything plastered head, you know. If it was all Marvel movies, if it was all, you know, just regular movie posters, video game, po like anything that like. Because I'm getting like just like a a cluttered very, vibe to yeah. it in my brain, like like a like a post no bills here thing in New York where it's like <laughs> it's covered with stuff. That that's the way uh, it's 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 given to us in the file, and that way it's like you know it's it's a little much. It's a little you know, especially when it's people because usually these posters will have the bands in said posters, so it's a lot of eyeballs looking at you when you wake up in the morning. Yeah, yeah, I, I like a little variety. I yeah. like it to be something because because you got to imagine most of these posters are like black, dark blues, right? <laughs> yeah, it's probably a little a little creepy. <laughs> some in some of those areas, maybe I don't know. And yeah, like, it could be more yeah. abstract posters right. too. It could be more fun. And like yeah. how like you know how obsessed is Jesse with these bands? Like, is her life this kind of thing? Because that's also another thing like is every t-shirt she wears a an emo band shirt is the only thing that like, she's not willing to move on and try new things which is something i get as well from this thing that works for some people you know like you know you get a couple of juggalos together they're going to be happy as clams the, you know, for, but you got to make sure you got to be on the same page for that. Right. If you're if you're a couple, you got to you got to really be sure. One other good thing is, you know, this is their private bedroom. So I'm assuming unless they're in like an open relationship or, you know, they have people in the bedroom. Um, this is very much for them. Like nobody's walking into the bedroom well, looking at Adam, the walls. Adam says this is the whole place. He says it's including the bedroom. <laughs> oh, including the bedroom, because I thought it was just like. No, Just I think I, I think he's okay. saying uh, all over the house, everywhere around our house. He says, "Okay, so that's <laughs> mm, that's pushing me more in another direction because now it's like, okay, my mother's coming over, the in-laws are coming over, um, we might have children someday. They're they're coming into the house, and it's like, oh, you guys are." You, you, you worked at a hot topic, didn't you? Like you guys <laughs> walked in the hot topic and said, "I'll take it." <laughs> yeah yeah uh yeah it's a little you know, a little much for me if it was like your office the bedroom like one room that nobody's really walking into like you said maybe the man cave or like the the attic where you're 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 playing your 
guitar. I don't know what people play instruments wise. Mm -hmm. your they key, do, yeah, your, that's your, one. Your guitar. You're going, at, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's one area that's like, you know, it's one closed off area. It's their bedroom. But now it's the entire house. That is a little much because, like, you know, yeah, like you said, you know, your place might be, it might have more of a nerdy vibe to it, but it's like you also have like normal things around you. You're not just like, like your all your blankets aren't from video games or movies. Your couch, your, you know, your cats don't have cat shirts on with like, you know, Star Wars on them, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> I'm sure. But, you know, there's levels to this. I'm, some people would walk into my place and be like, oh, this guy needs to get a life. But there's... yours is more eclectic. Like yours is like different. Like it's not all Star Wars, let's say, or it's not all one thing. You have different right. things and you're not like, yeah, you're, you're a fucking nerd, but uh -huh. you're an eclectic nerd. Like you have Lego stuff, you have board games, you have video games, you have movie posters from like popular movies. Yeah, that's it's not true. all you know, just one <laughs> band or one just like because even even like emo, everyone has like, their their thresholds, you know. Right. That's all. That's all. But like emo is very much like if that's they were to specific. say concerts or bands in general, mm. okay. Maybe they're a music person, but emo mm. is like, it's, it's, it's making the, the, it's narrowing down the subject matter. It's also a well. very polarizing genre. Like some people really can't stand it. <laughs> and it's very of the era too. Like, yes. Right. Like I think of yeah. like emo stuff of like between 2005 and 2015, like that's, and that's extending it quite a bit. It does feel like going back to your point earlier, it does feel specifically like, you're holding on to your high school years pretty hard. <laughs> right. And it would be the same thing too, if it was like, you know, one sports team or one, like one of anything or one sub genre of anything. It's like, maybe it's time to like broaden your, your branch your, your out. Views. Yeah. Go, go see a different band. but at least it wasn't country because it was country. I'd say, you know, he's Adam's going to burn it down. Which country? Um, American Careful. country music, American country music. <laughs> uh, Russia. I don't, the Patriots aren't going to like that one. Ah, <laughs> uh, here's my verdict. Okay. You can give it to us. Anytime. The post, oh. the posters, you know, everyone has, like I said, everyone has their own limits. If you want to have posters on your wall framed or unframed, I think there's a way to do it tastefully. Mm -hmm. It depends on your opinion. It depends on your preference and your setup and what they are. There's, you know, th it's too, there's too many variables for me to give a blanket good or bad on that front. But I what? understand Adam's concerns. Mm -hmm. And I think him saying he didn't ask to, he didn't say, let's take them all down. Mm -hmm. He didn't remove them all in the night while she was sleeping. Right. <laughs> he just said, could we move some of them? And her reaction was pretty negative. I, I, I think there's, like you said, they're cohabitating. It's a shared space. There's got to be compromise on what the walls look like. Uh, so there's there's nothing that Adam is doing wrong. He's not guilty. You know, I have to 100% agree with you. As somebody who is uh, actively cohabitating with somebody, we do have a happy medium of what we are putting up on the walls and, 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 and what we're designing with and what we're doing. You know, right now, because we don't own our own space yet, it is kind of we're stuck to like a room or two that we can do things with. So it's very much an explosion in one room of both of our topics. But luckily, we are, you know, we like the same things. But it's not all of one thing. And I can see this as, you know, most emo bands that I can think of were male driven. They were the, the, the lead singers were mostly men. I can't think of any female. Uh, Avril Lavigne, I guess, is an emo singer. Um, sure. Um, oh. <laughs> so, like, you know, I could understand, you know, if this is a, a thing of like, you know, maybe the straight man wants some more variety elsewhere and is tired of looking at. <laughs> skinny white men just staring at him all the time. Maybe. <laughs> um, I was taking it that way. But, you know, <laughs> yes, he, you know, they are cohabitating. They are in their 30s. So it is time to, like, maybe elevate and, 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 and make it a little bit more adult for the time. So I don't think he's guilty of really anything. Um, and you're right. He didn't take things down. He didn't, like, throw them away in the middle of the night. Now he was just like, hey, can we move some stuff, maybe add some things, subtract some stuff, 
And, you know, she kind of, Jesse went a little bit overboard and could have changed more. So, you know, Adam, not guilty. Well, since we have both brought down not guilty verdicts, that means that it is Jesse who needs to be punished in this case. We have to sentence her for her crimes. Mm -hmm. Uh, First thing that comes to the top of my head is we take some emo posters that she loves so much and we um, wrap her in them like a mummy until she suffocates to death. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just That's just top of my head. Like death I'm by a thousand poster paper cuts. Yeah, or it could be one big one. As oh. long as she suffocates. So uh, my, my, my punishment that I'm thinking of is she has to painstakingly go around to each poster, taking them down, but removing the tape from the corners without ripping bending or removing any of the poster and as we all know it's not easy maybe it's um you think it's she's got tape or maybe she has those poster tabs any any kind of poster hanging that's not a frame is just terrible because it always does damage to either the walls or the poster itself because i know when i was uh, living in a college dorm there was like a 40 foot list of like all the things you cannot use to hang a poster <laughs> in your dorm well that was uh, the, the struggle for me was always taking all the posters home during mm-hmm. the summer, and then I just have a stack of posters, all of them with their tabs, and then they're getting stuck to each other, yep. <laughs> and they're, like, ripping as I'm trying to keep them sticky and put them back on the wall or whatever. Because I was <laughs> so. always a big fan of using the thumbtacks, because it's a small, minimally invasive hole that goes into the corner of your poster, but mm. you can't, you can't, a lot of dorm rooms I stayed in had, like, cement walls, mm. or, like, you just weren't allowed to put thumbtacks in walls, because if you think about it for years... If people keep putting thumbtacks, your walls are going to be awful. Yeah. And I always hated that. They always had that blue sticky stuff. They would like leave stains on your posters, like a Mm. fun tack or whatever that was. There's really no good poster rehanging method. I'm waiting for the future where your walls are like a, a desktop wallpaper on your computer. Well, that is one thing that I always wanted. I want for a movie poster. I mean, I have a lot of physical posters, but you take like an, I want a full color e ink display that you can hang mm-hmm. sideways or like, you know, like a poster and you could display different things on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that'd be awesome. But I want that for the whole wall. You want a four wall projection system. I want to be like today. I, I want to be in the jungle. Boom. Today. That'd I want to be, be on the beach. Come on. That'd, the... be, that'd be dope as hell. Yeah. Why? Why isn't somebody working on this? Yeah. Because you could be like, anyway. oh, today I want my wallpaper to be a blue, a blue wallpaper and it's covered everything and have little weird things on it. Or... Why should I be confined to the same walls and, and decorations or wallpaper every, every day. day? And hey, it's, it's going to become a time and a place where we're going to have no windows because we're going to be so overpopulated that you can put in fake windows. You can look out at anywhere. You can be living in New York City and looking in Jamaica. Explain to me why overpopulation leads to no windows. <laughs> Because they're going to build all these apartments with no windows. Oh, because they're so close together. Close together. Yeah. Sure. Well, listeners and viewers, let us know what you would put on your walls. How do you handle your poster situations? What do you think of our verdicts? Agree or disagree? Email us, geeksontrial at gmail.com, or you can leave a comment on YouTube. You can also email us to give us your own geeky cases. We'll settle them for you, whether they're about the world of music, sports, video games, movies, stamp collecting, um, murder, anything of the sort. You can email us there or we have a handy dandy form. There's a link in our episode show notes where you can fill that out and send it to us. We'll, we'll change your names, protect the innocent and everything. And if you want to help us support the show and we really wish you would help us pay for some of the time that we're, we're doing here and recording and, and get some new equipment and all that head on over to our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash geeks on trial. It's only five bucks a month. And Hey, you know, we have a brand new show over there that comes out every two weeks and you can get on, uh, over there and the more people that we get signed up over there the more fun ideas that we have to give to you our beautiful lovely patrons that's patreon.com slash geeks on trial hey jonathan where can people find you when you're not hanging posters of um emo bands oh follow me online i have a website jonathanestes.com that's my name with the dot com after it Hmm. you'll find my social media my other podcast my uh youtube channel all that stuff is there Sometimes I put new stuff up. Sometimes I don't. 
How about you, Ivan? You can find me a bunch of places on YouTube, but the main place you can find me is youtube.com slash the snack guy. I got a bunch of shorts going up. I have a new video that came out uh, uh, last week and uh, another one that's coming out next week. I got some, I got some pre-recorded videos going up on the web all the time. That's uh, youtube.com slash the snack guy and fun shorts over there too. Wow. Sounds like a great time. It's a fun time. We sure time. have a lot to offer the people, don't we? We do. Hope that you're enjoying listening or watching to the show. Hey, if you uh, are, are too cheap and miserly to give us five bucks, tell a friend about the show. Spread the love. Otherwise, hope you're having a good start to the summer. Is it summer? Well, I mean, it was like 30 degrees yesterday, so I don't know if it's actually summer here yet. Well, it's May. It's going to be May. Oh, no, May. you can't. It already is. You can't do that. That, that time has passed. All right. It's time to go. Thanks for watching right. or listening, folks. My name is Jonathan Estes. My name is Ivan Hahn, and this case is closed. We'll catch you next time. Bye.